Welcome to this site. My name is Mark Swinney and I'm glad you're here. You know how when someone feels especially sad, those internal thoughts and feelings can quickly translate into an obvious external, physical effect. You see it when the person's eyes overflow with water. That can get you thinking. If there are such obvious connections between thoughts and physical tears, what might be the connections between thoughts and overall physical well-being? For a very long time now, people from diverse cultures and eras have been exploring the mental side to health and wellness. What might be the potential for us all on a worldwide scale to learn how to make better connections between thought and healing? Imagine how it would be for everyone if healthcare were somehow more than so narrowly material. A century ago, pathfinding thinker and author Mary Baker Eddy made this observation. Whatever guides thought spiritually benefits mind and body. She had experienced firsthand the mind-body connection, but took it much further. She recognized that positive and permanent effects on health and well-being lay in something immensely more potent than only the human mind. She was someone who, through her extensive study of the Bible, recognized Jesus as a scientific thinker and healer who understood the potency of thought's effect on health better than anyone ever has. Today, it's common to hear doctors talking about the mind-body connection as well. For instance, well-known physician and author Dr. Lisa Rankin has some very helpful thoughts about this in her bestseller, Mind Over Medicine, Scientific Proof You Can Heal Yourself. Right at the beginning, she asks, What if I told you that caring for your body is the least important part of your health? that for you to be truly vital, other factors are more important. On this little planet, we've made remarkable progress in so many areas. Healing mentally, though, not so much. It feels that, overall, we've just lingered a few feet behind the starting line, never really taking determined forward strides towards demonstrating in a broad worldwide sense consistent spiritual healing. Many people believe that it's high time to make some truly significant progress in this important area, important really to everyone on earth. So we might as well move forward and take that next step. As you can surmise, healing mental practice all begins with a search for well-being in something more than physicality. Okay, you might say, wait a minute though. What you're introducing here is prayer. Prayer and all is fine, but when we get down to it, we're essentially physical, aren't we? Much of conventional medicine is based on the assumption that people are, yes, machines, material machines. Material machines warrant exclusively only material treatments. From that perspective of people, mainstream medicine delivers exactly what it promises. It offers material options for how it perceives us as physical material machines. In referring to those material options, Dr. Rankin says, certainly these are all important, even critical factors to optimizing your health. But what if something else is even more important? What if you have the power to heal your body 
just by changing how your mind thinks and feels. Mary Baker Eddy's book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, is her primary best-known work. And in it, she observes, when we remove disease by addressing the disturbed mind, giving no heed to the body, we prove that thought alone creates the suffering. Okay, does that mean that using willpower, we should just clench our fists, grit our teeth, and mentally visualize health? Well, that's got to be better than holding in thought and image of disease or injury. Is human willpower enough? In treatment, can the variable nature of willpower really be any more reliable than materiality? Through her study of Jesus' healing examples, followed by her own vast practice of effective prayer and treatment, Mary Baker Eddy explains that metaphysical healing includes infinitely more than merely to know that mind governs the body. She is clearly taking this whole mind-body connection thing to an appreciably higher level. What if health is something more than just a condition of matter or of human thought? Health is not a condition of matter, but of mind, she points out in Science and Health. New readers of her book soon discern what Mary Baker Eddy is saying here regarding mind. She is using that word in a distinctly different way. She capitalizes mind because she's actually employing it as nothing less than a title for God. God, she sets forth, is an infinitely powerful, yet completely non-material presence, a conscious, very loving presence that is entirely good. The mind that is God, who is really our ultimate creator, she explains, is the source and true standpoint for health and wholeness. Early on in her life, after noticing connections between thought and health, she became curious about and experimented with the human mind's faith behind things like the placebo effect, but then went on to look for health and wellness beyond matter and human thinking, and instead in divine mind. For all mankind, really, this was a tremendous and very progressive leap. Next, she proceeded to prove the validity of her discovery through the healing of many, many diseases, disorders, and injuries. Okay, so on a practical level, if health is a condition of more than matter and more than human will, but is a condition of divine mind, how do people like you and me connect with it? How does this change of perspective brought about by the influence of this mind that is God actually cure? Let me give you an example. Early one morning when I was a teenager, I woke up suffering from severe food poisoning. Without waiting, even for a moment, I, I turned to the presence of God to help me. Previously, I'd learned from reading about the way Jesus healed people that he didn't depend on just himself. He actually went unto his Father, as he put it. He used the term Father as a name for God. That approach became my model too. I realized I wasn't alone, and from what I'd learned from Jesus' example, I was aware that right then and there, I could go to Divine Mind for help. There lying on my bed, I reached over to a bookshelf and opened randomly my copy of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. You can imagine how surprised I was 
when my eyes landed directly on these words. Admit the, hum the common hypotheses that food is the nutriment of life, and there follows the necessity for another admission in the opposite direction, that food has power to destroy life, God, through a deficiency or an excess, a quality or a quantity. And she says on that same page, the fact is, food does not affect the absolute life of man. And this becomes self-evident when we learn that God is our life. That book is 600 pages long, and my eyes fell only on those specific sentences. Boy, this felt like no accident. As I read them again, I felt such love for God. In a flash, I realized that as mind's creation, my entire life is God. My present substance is actually divinely spiritual. Then came the kicker. The battleground wasn't a material stomach, and it wasn't the food inside my stomach that I needed to address either. It was the belief, the mistaken belief, that food has power to destroy a creation of mind. I saw more clearly than ever that we are not actually material machines. We remain God's creation, not matter's creation. Effective prayer is not about using the power of divine mind to manipulate matter. It's entirely about mind and its intact mental creation, already spiritually present and whole. Complete spirituality. That's something very real and tangible right now. The divine authority of this truth is something for which to be grateful, because really, for anyone, it destroys the lie of sickness. It gently dawned on me that the power of the divine mind that is God had transformed my thoughts and perspective of myself. I glimpsed the fact that my health truly is a condition, not a physiology, but of mind. No material machinery, just spirituality. Health in mind. The sickness was completely gone in just a few minutes. There were no physical after effects because the permanence and solidity of divine mind was behind my mental transformation. When I look back on it, that healing is defined for me as a human, very mistaken, fearful perspective disappearing with all remaining clearly in its place being the perspective and intelligence of the mind that is God. You may be able to hear in my voice and see in my eyes how these ideas about prayer and healing mean so much to me. What do these ideas mean to all of mankind? Over the years, I've had and seen quite a number of healings in this manner. And I believe that it's time for mankind to move beyond the power of God to cleanse thought and heal as just a curiosity. And, you know, these kinds of healings are just the low-hanging fruit. Higher up is the knowledge and recognition of the entirety of our presently intact spiritual identities. But we must start somewhere and take that first step. Explore this website, and you'll learn of many people's very inspiring experiences. Imagine what it might mean for people to understand that healthcare can be mental, beginning with health itself, recognized as a condition not of physicality, but literally of the ever-present loving mind that is God. What might be the potential for us all on a worldwide scale if we each learn something of how to make better connections between thought, divine mind, and healing?